Coming out of Brooklyn, New York, Tyrone Williams, along with Mr. Magic, was responsible for creating the biggest platform in hip-hop in the mid-80s called Mr. Magic's Rap Attack on WBLS in New York City. That one hip-hop show was responsible for generating millions of listeners across the tri-state area and launching the careers of most legends and icons we revere today. Also known as Fly Ty, and was the founder and owner of Cold Chillin' Records, who launched the careers of Roxanne Shante, MC Shan, Biz Marquis, Big Daddy Kane, and Coogee Rap, to name a few. In this exclusive two and a half hour sit down, Fly Ty Williams will break down his career, his thoughts on music, and will definitely cause some controversy on his thoughts about Leo Cohen, Russell Simmons, and Andre Harrell. He has some incredible stories about the music industry that involve guns, drugs, and violence. Here's a snippet of what's to come. So what do you think um, your impact to this whole hip hop thing now in 2018? Where, where do you, where, do you feel you get enough credit for what I you don't get any, I don't get the credit at all. But there's nobody in this game could say that they weren't impacted by what I did. Right. I don't care if you Russell Simmons, Andre Harrell, Leo Cohen. I'm telling I ain't even talking about the artists. I'm right. my labels. Let me ask you this question. You mentioned Leo Cohen earlier. He had said some things about Dame Dash. I don't know if you heard, like he kind of dis discredited Dame Dash to a degree. And Dame Dash feels like he's like a culture vulture. Now, what you did say was he was trying to manipulate his way into Russell. He didn't try, he did. Then. Right. <laughs> he didn't right. try to he, he Listen, I know I'm not mad, Leo. Right. In terms of getting in with Russell, he started out as a, a roadie. Right. Then went to a road manager. Russell couldn't pay the rent on his office. Your daddy had a, 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 a loft on 19th Street and 6th Avenue. Third Avenue, something like that. Right. Russell said, I mean, Leo said, we could do the office there, but I gotta be a partner. Gotta be a partner. Oh, right. he was smart early. Right, early. And we, we were all young. Right. Him, Andre. And Andre was a part of Rush at the time, too. Wasn't he like a CEO or he was, a VP? Who, Russell? Like Andre? Yeah. Yes. It was him and Russell. Right. All right. I remember I told uh, Russell, I, I seen Leo. Now, if, if Leo made a mistake, there was a part, like an apartment off to the left, where Andre would take Russell and Leo into the apartment and discuss it. Right. If Andre made a mistake, and it was a huge law. Bunch of employees. They always yell across the office. Russell, I told you he don't know what he's doing. I told Andre, he gonna get you out of here, money. Right. Don't trust him. Right. All right. You can't trust, believe nothing he said. All right. So, I mean, Leo destroyed Dame and. In your opinion? No, Dame and uh, uh, Hove's relationship. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The th we looked at the three of us and like, we're the three biggest niggas. Right. <laughs> All right, however, I'll give you an argument with us. Andre will say, let the argue over who got the biggest sex symbol. Andre, heaven D, heaven D, don't we love her, don't we love her. Girls, they girls, they love him. Right. All right. Russell, what? LL do his lips like this. Girls lose their mind. And I, I got two words for y'all, big daddy. Right. So we have arguments over everything, always trying to outdo one another. Friendly, we cool. Right. But we trying to beat each other. Right. You know, so we boys and all that, but we trying to win. Right. We trying to beat each other. And as far as the three of us are concerned, really, nobody else exists. First time I go to Sugar Hill, I see all of them flash on. They're getting forty thousand dollar checks. <laughs> For us, and I see Miss Rob. I even know at the time. I end up being very close to her and her husband. Right. She's begging them to save their money. I see her doing it. Now, these knuckleheads, they spend their money. Junebug, Magic DJ was a drug dealer. They flying Junebug all across the country bringing half a kilo. Biz and, and Burke Padell convinced him that he's going to get half of what he ever he get. Right. If they make the deal. Right. But if I make the deal, I don't get nothing. Right. Now, I ain't take nothing. 
because you knew. From the publishing. Right, from the publishing. Now, you talks about how we go out there, and I say, yo, I want you to sign him. He said, well, how much should I give him? And I said, give him 100000 Right, that's what he said. Right. Give him 100000 And he gets 100000 Now, you goes back. What's he tell them for? I don't know. But Bert Padel and them tell him, you got to give Biz half. I like living my life in the fast lane. Partying hard and having fun. Females, I need more than one. Straight up and down on a serious tip. I ain't with no relationship. It may sound like a diss, but believe me, it's not. Matter of fact, I really like you a lot. But it's a dead issue. From the time you get signed and you start seeing shit, you traveling in different circles and niggas is knowing what you're doing, you become instant celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Especially at this time. Because who else, who else from the hood or who else, who else, who, any nigga that you know that know any nigga that know a nigga that signed? You see what I'm saying? So you that nigga. Right, right. So imagine what, and I'm young, still on the block. Imagine what the fuck the shit that I'm doing.